So I tried to record this video earlier um, and, and give you guys some good tips on pitching. However, my mic is not being very nice. So um, we're gonna try this again. Hello, my name is Trevor May. I am a Major League Baseball player for the Minnesota Twins um, and also a Twitch streamer. I'm making my first baseball related video today. Um, I'm really, really interested to see how this goes. Um, so at the, at the end of the video, don't forget to drop some comments in the comments below. Give me some ideas for some uh, uh, new uh, expansions we can do on some of the information I give today, um, and any and don't forget to drop a, a subscription and hit the bell, and also give me a thumbs up and give me a, give me a like for there. All right. So today I want to cover a couple things really quickly. All right. I want to go over the pitches that I throw, and then the idea of, of why I throw what I throw, and a little bit of bat, a little bit of one on one knowledge on, on kind of how the art of pitching has progressed. Yeah. Uh, recently in baseball okay it's a question i've gotten a lot um hey how do you throw your slider how do you throw your curveball how do you throw your fastball so i wanted to just go over the go over the pitches and then explain why i am approaching the uh, pitching the way that i approach it and then uh some of the schools of thought into why um pitches are chosen all right so firstly let's go over fastballs all right i throw vast majority of the time especially out of the bullpen now that i'm a full-time bullpen uh um arm is the four seam fastball now, I know it's kind of light here, but you can see that my fingers are uh, on the right side of the ball, because I'm right-handed. On the outside of the ball is the horseshoe, and then my two fingers go directly across the horseshoe. Okay, That is a classic forcing fastball. You can also throw with the horseshoe in. It is all preference based on how comfortable this seam is in your fingers. When you throw your, the ball, everything depends on the tips of your fingers and the pressure you put on the seam. Now, some guys go closer together. Some guys go farther apart. Um, what I've noticed is a lot of guys who have natural cut on their ball uh, seem to put their fingers closer together, and they seem to throw a horseshoe in. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to give you cut on your ball. It's just if you notice that about it and that's the way you throw, some of those things might be affecting the way that your ball moves because that's how you move it is by putting pressure on different parts of the ball. Now, I throw a four-seam fastball. This gives natural arm side run, meaning when you throw cut, it goes against your arm. This is your my right arm. If the ball moves to the right, that's called arm side run. If it moves to the left, that's called cut. Okay, so my my four seam has a little bit of arm side run, and that's just naturally how it comes out of my fingers because the way my hands are made, the way the length of my fingers, the way that they curve, the way that I put uh, pressure on the ball, all those things, those all factor in the way the ball moves. Okay, the other schools of thought are two seam or sinker. Right, a lot of guys throw sinkers. Uh, uh, the ball moves down or arm side a lot more um, with the two seam than the four seam, or they'll throw a one seam. They get one seam can be thrown like this. It can be thrown like this. You can throw a no seam completely inside the finger in, inside the horseshoe. And you got no finger on a seam. Sometimes that's comfortable, guys. A lot of times the one seam and the two seam give a little bit more sink to the guys that don't necessarily get enough sink from their two seam. Okay, now with fastballs, there are two things that pitcher is trying probably trying to do one is throw the ball under throw the ball underneath the bat or throw the ball above the bat those are the two options with fastballs okay um guys who throw sinkers are trying to throw underneath the ball or if the ball's hit it's going to be hit mostly on the ground guys that throw fast four seams are going to throw try to throw the ball above the bat or when it's hit it's going to be popped up those are the two those are the, 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 the ideal outcomes for pitchers when they throw fastballs, okay? I am a four-seam guy because I have something that we call um, above-average spin rate, which isn't crazy high, but it's above-average, um, and uh, also efficient carry on my four-seam. Now, what that means is the ball spins at a high rate, and then the axis that it's spinning on is very consistent, meaning its path, its defiance of gravity is high. So what hitters do when they hit is they, they, they watch the ball out of your hand and then they compensate for gravity naturally because we all do and everything we do, compensate for uh, uh, gravity and then we try to predict where the ball is gonna be. You identify a fastball and you identify how that fastball is gonna move. Now, if you throw a high efficiency, high spin rate fast, fastball, example, my friend Ryan Presley does this very well and you see him get swings and misses high in the zone. It's one from velocity and two, because the ball looks like it's gonna be lower than it actually is, AKA an invisible ball AKA high efficiency spin rate. I swing under it, lots of swings and misses on fastballs in the zone or above the zone even, right? 
you'll see that I throw up there quite a bit too. Same idea, okay? Sinkers, on the other hand, want to move below. They have lower spin rates, more wobble, meaning less efficiency, meaning the ball is going to drop more. So guys see the ball, they see the spin, they go to hit it, and they're above it. And they'll swing, a guy like uh, uh, Zach Britton, crazy low spin rate sinker. Heavy, called heavy, because when you hit it, you don't hit it square ever, and it feels like you hit a, a, hit a, uh, like a lead ball. Um, he, throws, he throws fastballs, it looks like it's going to be down the middle and bounces. That's incredible, right? That's a different type of movement than me, but it's the same idea. Up and down, right? Up seems to be uh, the, 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 the style of baseball played. A lot of home runs. A lot of guys up, like, trying to get, lift the ball. And that gets lots of swing and misses high in the zone. So you see guys that throw high, sp high spin rate, high efficiency up in the zone. They tend to high, have higher strikeouts, right? Uh, for example, Eovaldi was doing it very well in the playoffs last year. Very similar, right? Secondly, um... Now, that's, there's, there's my fastballs. I throw a four-seam fastball the fast majority of the time, and there's every once in a while I throw a two-seam. Uh, just based on the guy, some guys hit my two-seam uh, worse than my four-seam. Vast majority, though, it's four-seam all the way. Okay? And then nextly, next, I'll throw my changeup. I'll show you how I throw my changeup. Just to show how it changes uh, from fastball to changeup. So I throw a classic circle changeup. You see this? Sorry. You see the circle there? Right? I have big enough hands where I can complete the circle. This ball, this finger kind of claws underneath it to, to take a little bit off of it. And then if you watch how I throw my four seam, I can literally switch my fingers back and forth. These two fingers then become these two fingers, which slows the ball down even more. These two provide resistance. You get a slower, slower, uh, uh, a little bit slower spin rate, which slows the ball down. But the more important thing is these two fingers react, get me on the exact same spin uh, trajectory as my four seam. So it looks exactly the same. Now, I'm not going to get as much movement, but I am going to get the perceived perception of a forcing fastball, which is my most, which what guys want to hit out is a forcing fastball. It's the easiest pitch to hit out. So if I throw force, if I can throw my change of exactly where I throw my forcing, all corners of the zone, I'm, it's going to be wildly successful because it's going to be slower. And then it's all about depth perception and playing with that instead of movement. That's the way that I use mine, right? Um, the other school of thought is throw, throw a two seam change up. Uh, off of your sinker you want it to look exactly the same so that's slower it actually drops more and guys swing over it more It'll be a swing and miss pitch guys will swing at change ups in the dirt as opposed to my change up in the dirt if it looks like my four seam in the dirt they're not going to swing at it because they know that my four seam in the dirt isn't a strike so they're not going to swing at a change up because it's not moving out of the zone it was already out of the zone the whole time if that makes sense okay nextly we'll show me I'll show you my curveball now i do a full spike knuckle curve right so this middle finger is on this outside seam with the horseshoe in towards me. Then I put my full knuckle on the inside of the seam. Now, uh, a disclaimer. I, I, I literally have my entire finger wrapped. If I pull my finger out, it's all white from being uh, jammed in there. This ball is fully in my hand like this. And this is comfortable to me. That is going to produce a slower curveball because this finger is going to produce a lot of resistance and not a lot of free movement. So there's only one path the ball can really come out as I flick my finger out. And it gives me a consistent spin, but it's a slower curveball on average. That's okay because it's more of a tumbling action and it works off my, my four-seam fastball. It looks like it's up. So I throw fajitas up. I throw a curveball off. They look like the same pitch halfway there and they diverge paths. It's called tunneling. You may have seen Trevor Bauer or, or, or um, other guys, uh, baseball guys, we talk about this on social media. Tunneling is is the idea that the ball, every pitch looks exactly the same for a long period of time out of your hand, right? And that's very hard to hit if you ask any hitter, okay? So I wanna tunnel that off my fastball. I wanna tunnel my changeup off my fastball as well because it does move more because it's slower, just not a lot, right? So those are my three big pitches I throw out of the bullpen. Now the other idea, so, so, if, so if we're talking about my tunneling, we're, we're moving off the same trajectory, that is the vertical axis, the Y axis, right? I want the ball to be either up or down, either up or down. I don't want it to diverge X on the x-axis much at all because uh, uh, the forward and back plane is easier for a hitter to determine if a ball is going away from them or into them that with my movement than it is up or down. So I try to really, really double down on the up and down factors. So I throw things that work that way. Um, 
So I throw a slider and I throw, I throw a, this is a, now let's let the, let the light fix this a little bit. There we go. It is basically horseshoe in, fastball, fingers brought a little bit close together and then have the horseshoe that's turned more towards you and then pull down on this, uh, this finger really pulls down that scene and you get the sideways action, the hard spinning slider. It's high 80s, it's harder than my curveball. There's times where I need something for a strike, that's breaking a little bit that's gonna be miss hit. Um, maybe get an early early swing and miss or, or, or an early weak swing um, or something or something, uh, some sort of wrinkle because I've thrown, been throwing a lot of pitches my other three and I don't have control over them. That's the way I use my slider. Now, that said, it moves more on the x-axis away and into, into hitters, and that is easier to perceive for me than the other three pitches. So it's become my final pitch. Also, sinkers, don't throw them very much anyways. So four seam, curveball, and changeup is mostly what I use. Okay, the other school of thought is using the x-axis more than the y-axis, sinkers and sliders, right? Roy Halladay was, a, was, a, was a extremely good at this, locating both the cutter moving this way and the sinker moving that way, and they had the exact same movement, except they got to a point and they went that way or that way. Once you do that, it's very hard to make a decision late, and you miss hit the ball quite a bit. Roy Halladay has lots and lots and lots of complete games and no hitters to show for it, right? And he was one of the best uh, at controlling those pitches I've ever seen. Now, that's not the way that I, I used to try to work like that as a, as a starter, but it wasn't playing to my strengths. And so that's what I'm trying to do, identify my strengths and, uh, uh, and then move forward with them and continue to improve those things and, and, and add wrinkles when I can and make good decisions and have educated, get educated reasons why I make the decisions I make. But um, I know I threw a lot of terms at you today. Um, I think this is a prime uh, opportunity for you guys to uh, kind of bring in a lot of this one-on-one information, kind of this basic stuff, uh, uh, chew on it a little bit. Um, and then we can we can start expanding because that's something I'm really interested in doing. And I like to have kind of a, a, a blanket um, answer for a lot of the things that you're asking me. And I also want to start adding some some baseball stuff here to the channel. So don't forget, go down in the comments, uh, um, pick something that you heard there and you would like expanded upon or, or, or other uh, baseball related activities or, or, or um, um, philosophies that you would like to discuss and maybe we'll we'll make a video in the future in this series uh who knows and don't forget to hit the little thumbs up button give me a like man the more likes we get uh the happier trevor is and don't forget to subscribe to the channel we got lots of Fortnite, uh lots of lots of uh all kinds of gaming stuff and a lot of stuff coming in the future as well so uh thank you so much for your time um i hope this was uh informative and i will see you next time